my first time ever seeing a bear not in a zoo. Like. Some say one of the stars of the Great Bear Conflict is its namesake, the Great Bear, also known as the Spirit Bear. It's a white black bear because of a recessive gene. And the only place in the world that it can be found is in this area in Canada and is considered sacred by the First Nations communities. Marvin Robinson is a Gitgat council member and spirit bear guide. The Gitgat people have been in the Great Bear region for thousands of years. Their home is Hartley Bay. After a long and bumpy boat ride, I arrived to see the town and meet with Marvin and a few others. Okay, so Marvin, tell me a little bit about what you do here. I own a company called Gitgat Spirit Tours, and uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing is taking people out to see uh, the rare spirit bear. We're always thinking about the animals yeah. first. Well, so, you don't really see places where the animals are so prevalent and part of daily life as here. I actually have gone to the meetings, pretty much just about every meeting in the last two, three years that had to do with this pipeline project. Yeah. And uh, I actually had Enbridge offer me across the table the actual company that uh, would be the escort tugs. And I was just blown away that just like that, they could say, you know, if, you, if but you have to let us know today yeah. if you want to own that company. Uh, Would you consider it? Is oh, no, no. Why? I, I, this, is, this is the way we live. You know, we're not willing to put everything at risk, you know, for, for, for money. We're not selling any of our territory. Yeah. So, you know, f for me, if, if it got to a point where somebody said, okay, if, if it's that much, you know what, I'd, I'd go back to paddling the canoe. For me, it's just, it's hilarious. It's the defining of richness. Yeah. People have different de different definitions of what it is to be rich in this country. Yeah. And this is, this to us is everything. Well, thank you very much. That was yeah, amazing. You're welcome. Thank you for bearing through getting eaten yeah. by mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From the very beginning of our Northern Gateway planning, we've sought out Aboriginal economic participation in this project. We've engaged with First Nations and Metis, irrespective of their experience with pipelines and the industry. We've used that input to develop a package of economic and social commitments for the Aboriginal communities along the route, to create local and regional economic opportunities and foster long-term sustainability. Next, I got to meet one of the elders and the matriarch of the community, Helen Clifton. We asked Enbridge, who's building these tankers? How safe are they? Mm -hmm. They're going to be double hauled. They're going to take tugs. They're going to bring them, bring them in, escort them in as their guides. We asked them, how far does your responsibility go? And it's only the end of the pipeline, which is Kitimat. The tankers are the responsibility of the flag of origin that they're flying. So you can't tell me that China, which is the big customer, that they're going to be responsible for a spill of the tank. There's no way that you can uh, compete with Mother Nature. There's nothing on this earth that you can say that you can win with Mother Nature. No. And to me, this may be the last stand of First Nations about their land, their territories, and try to keep this pristine environment the way it is for future generations, yourself included, and all others that want to come and see it the way it is. I won't be here, but I'll be watching. <laughs> So back in Toronto, I also asked Jamie from Ethical Oil about Aboriginal rights. But you talk about, you know, like um, the environment or human rights, but a lot of people would argue that um, what's happening, for example, with the Northern Gateway Pipeline is, is kind of walking all over the rights of the Aboriginal people who live there and it's not great for the environment. So how is choosing Canadian oil in that <laughs> sense any better than what's going on in like Iran or Saudi Arabia? 
Listen, whenever there is a major infrastructure project like the Northern Gateway Pipeline, uh, there is going to be a public debate. That's what happens in a democracy. People with differing viewpoints get to express their opinions. And in, in Canada, there's a regulatory system set up by the government that says we're going to have a finite period of time where we're going to review the project. We're going to review all the engineering that goes into building the pipeline and the precautions in place. We're going to hear from the local impacted communities to see what, whether they're for it or against it. Because a lot of this is jobs. Like it's kind of a story that's not being told when people talk about the Northern Gateway Pipeline debate. This means thousands of jobs for Canada. With any industrial project, there is going to be risk. Uh, you, you have to be honest about that. Uh, but the reason why we're going through this, the hearing right now with the, with the Northern Gateway Pipeline hearings is to mitigate those risks, make sure they're being looked after. And if there's anything that the National Energy Board doesn't like in Enbridge's plans, they have the authority as a regulator to say, if you want to build your pipeline, these are the standards you have to uphold and maintain. And Enbridge just a few weeks ago announced that they were putting another $500 million into pipeline safety and integrity, specifically at the Northern Gateway project, wow. to address concerns that have been raised to date. So, there's kind of like this false debate in terms of, oh, pro-pipeline, anti-pipeline. The whole reason why we're going through this regulatory process is so that it gets the level of scrutiny that we've seen over the past 18 months. So one of the reasons why Enbridge has put even more into this is because there's been thousands of eyes looking at this project and the engineering and the very complicated technical detail and all the scientists involved and said, ah, okay, like this is good, this is great, but like we want excellence. So this is where you have to get to excellence here. And that's, this is why I think companies like Enbridge have responded and this is why we're going through this process. Okay, so it's a complicated and important issue for Canadians, and we've only just scratched the surface in this half hour. Now it's up to you to learn more and make an informed decision about the future of our country. Check out these websites.